The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. Rick, welcome to the show. Hi, Dr. Kenner. How are you? Good, good. Tell me, what's on your mind? Um, Well, me and my wife, we've been having problems, and more recently... um, She's she's an actress and she does uh, theater shows and um, I've tried to I've tried to be supportive as I can and even though it does take a lot of her time away from the family, um, but more recently it's come up to where you know I've been sick and I I've asked her I said well after your show can you please come home and and you know help help out and she's she's kind of you know neglected to do that and it's really it's it's kind of brought back a lot of issues that we've had in the past with her kind of choosing her her theater career over the family which i understand you know that she wants to to excel in that and i support her in that but when it starts to interfere with our family life and when it starts to interfere with my feelings for her that's when there's a problem okay how long have you been married we've been uh, married seven years seven years and how many kids Uh, just one one child how old uh six years old six years old and was that a child you both chose you wanted um kind of out of the blue out of the blue. Yeah. Okay. What was her response towards that? Did she want the child? Did she want a family? Um, I, initially, she was, uh, you know, she she was afraid. And in the past, she's um, she never, you know, she never indicated that she wanted a family. But when she became pregnant and you know told me about that, um, I told her that you know I would be there for her. I would help support the family, and everything would be fine. And with that, she, you know she agreed to take on the responsibility of having the child. So it was kind of a, a mutual decision, but at the same time, I, I could sense hesitation in her, you know, with her. Okay. Has that ever come out in the open? Have you talked? Because she, what I'm sensing is that if she feels ambivalent about the family, you know, when I, when we started a family, my husband and I, we waited five years, we got a sailboat instead of kids for the first five years, and boy, by the time we wanted kids, we wanted kids, and yeah. we were both invested, we were both on board, and it was a planned event, and I mean, we were checking every month, we couldn't wait to have kids. If it came as a shock to her, if she was career-bound, she may feel like her life was the rug was pulled out from under her even if she values having a family it was not her top priority yeah she she definitely has has said that that she felt that you know it it would hold her back from what she wanted to do and you know and i i I told her you know upon that being said i told her that you know having a family doesn't mean your life ends you know i mean for me my life barely began as soon as my daughter was born i mean i it seemed to me that everything was moving in a much better direction, more direct, more focused. I really had a goal, and I was working toward, um, you know, providing for my family. And, and, and for me, it made everything go the right direction. But it, I, I don't know, it seems for me that just the responsibility of a family for her is, is just, she she doesn't want to accept the responsibility. It's almost like she can be, with, with that, she can be very immature sometimes. And it's so frustrating for me because I don't know what to do. And we haven't been to marriage counseling in uh, quite a number of years. We, we did marriage counseling about four years ago. Okay, how did that work out? Um, unfortunately, it, 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 we, we went for a few sessions, and then, um, we, you know, we didn't have any money to, to continue with the sessions. So, and, and I definitely wanted to get back into marriage counseling, but I don't know where to go if I don't have a lot of money to pay for it. Okay. Well, you can. There are workbooks out on the market now that where you can get a workbook and ask yourself some questions, work together. But it sounds like you don't have the time. What about intimacy? What's going on there? Um, as far as sexually or emo- yeah, sexually, emo- and and psychologically, and just to feel close to, to each other, even if it's not um, sex. Well, well, as far as sexually, I mean, it's it it hasn't been a problem. It's been good as far as it seems to me and to her. I mean, she always seems happy, and, and I, I, I always feel more close to her, um, you know, when we are having sex, and, and, it's, and, it's, and we haven't had any real dry spells or anything. Um, and emotionally, I, you know, our connection emotionally, um, it's, it's kind of off and on. It's really strange. I mean, she's been gone almost this whole week, and it's, it's been very difficult for me because, um, you know, I work full time and then I come home and I take care of my daughter and take care of the house and everything. And I noticed that when she's gone for these long periods of time, I, this distance grows between us emotionally. Okay. And how does that show up? Are you, are you, uh, 
making sarcastic comments to each other? Are you withdrawing and just not talking to each other? Are you screaming at each other? Hey, I got to interrupt this because we've got to pay some bills. 30 seconds, that's it. A very quick ad and then Alan will be back. Romance. I wish I knew more about what girls want from a relationship. Boy, I wish I knew more about what I want. Where's that ad I saw? Here it is. The Selfish Path to Romance, a serious romance guidebook. Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Huh. The Selfish Path to Romance. That is interesting. Okay, and how does that show up? Are you are you uh, making sarcastic comments to each other? Are you withdrawing and just not talking to each other? Are you screaming at each other? It could be. It's a mix of like all of those. I mean, it, it, it tends to be initially. It's like a withdrawal. I mean, between uh, between me, I start to get frustrated and angry. I can tell um, that I'm, I'm starting to get frustrated that she's gone so much. Mm-hmm. But I try to I try to you know curb that as much as I can. But um, I mean, eventually, you know, eventually it just comes out that I'm frustrated that she's been gone so much, and so I start to make sarcastic comments, and then she such starts, as what? Give me a sampler of your best your <laughs> your best zingers. Um, oh boy, that's kind of hard. Um, I, I'll say things like, well, you know, it's it's um, you know stuff like it's kind of hard. Uh, it's it's not easy taking care of the family when you're just one parent. Things like that. Um, you know, or or when she comes home, I'll say, "I hope you had a you know, I hope you had a great time." Um, you know, things like that. And, and you know, I'll constantly bring up the fact that that I've been working and I've been taking care of the family while she's been out. You know, and and the fact that the the hardest thing for me to deal with is is not that she she is gone with her shows. The hardest thing for me is that after the shows, the theater people all go out and they do all this. You know, they go to the restaurants and they go to the you know whatever else, and and she's gone for an additional you know x amount of hours per night, and it's so frustrating for me. Okay, is she interested in anyone else? Do you suspect? I have that? a feeling. I have a feeling that she is definitely possibility that she is interested in someone else. I mean, she's been spending a lot of time on the internet, on uh, MySpace, and she's and she's very flirtatious by nature, and she's kind of um, been talking to people on the internet, and occasionally men will call her phone. And I've caught her in, in a lie before, and it wasn't necessarily about a guy, but, you know, I came home and she wasn't home, and then I called her on her cell phone, and I, and I said, where are you? And she says, I'm at home, and she wasn't home. And I called okay. her, and I, I told her to tell me where she was, and she says, uh, I went for a walk, I'm over on, you know, the street. And I said, well, well, tell me where you are, I'll come pick you up. And she wouldn't tell me. And then finally she called me back about 10 minutes later and told me where she was, and I went and picked her up. But I just, I, I'm just not, I'm getting to the point where I can't trust her, and it's, it's just, it's, it's killing me. Okay, so if if that's the core of it, that you just feel like she's moved away and it's not just that she's trying to juggle too much and that she needs to reassess her values and prioritize, put the family in there, put your daughter in there, because I have a lot of empathy for your daughter if mom's not in the picture a lot. Yeah. But if you think there's a betrayal or a, or a betrayal about to happen, then you need to sit down with her. And I would cut out the sarcasm because all that does is make her feel justified in acting on her uh, warmer feelings towards someone else if she's complaining about being married and having kids and, you know, to some guy who's a good listener and a fellow actor and then, you know, she's moving away from you. Don't tr- don't use guilt with her. She's earned the guilt, but let her, if you're saying, if you say something to her like, honey, let's sit down and talk. We're both so unhappy and I know I make sarcastic comments and I know you make them back and it's not good for either of us and our daughter. Let's talk about where we're going and if we can some what are your thoughts honey on how to rekindle the relationship and I'd work with that I'd work productively with her on that and I wish we had a whole lot more time to talk about this you can call up another time and I'll be glad to work with you more on this and I'd love to hear how things go thank I want to Yeah thank you so much for calling Rick And here's a little more from Dr. Kenner Is any your first month's salary doesn't pay our debt for what you've done I taught her one thing. No. Don't do this, don't do that. That's more than all of us could do in all I the years. I wanted to teach her what language is. I know without it to do nothing but obey is no gift. Obedience without understanding is a blindness too. The world is not an easy place for anyone. I don't want her just to obey. But to let her have a way in everything is a lie. To her. 
And Miss Annie is Miss Annie Sullivan. That's the miracle worker. And they're talking about Helen Keller. And think about in your own life, what have you accepted as on obedience? You know, what have you accepted as an injunction? Do this, don't do that. And you haven't done your own thinking on that. You don't want to rob yourself of the ability to see through your own eyes, through your own mind, through your own thoughts. And you don't want to just go by what other people say. You don't want to ever do that. You want to be independent. And that doesn't mean that you won't like other people. I mean, that's a false alternative, that if you're independent, that means that you're isolated. In fact, you're a much more interesting person if you're an active thinker. So I highly encourage you to think about areas areas in your own life that where you've robbed yourself, you've just accepted something on faith or dutifully or by obedience, you don't want to ever do that to yourself. Ask the questions that you need to ask. For more Dr. Kenner podcast, go to drkenner.com and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner and co-author Dr. Edwin Locke, who's world famous for his theories in goal setting. An important personality trait valuable in romance is genuineness. Have you ever dated someone and thought to yourself, what a phony? When evaluating a potential partner, ask yourself if the person is trying to play a role or are they just themselves? Role playing stems from insecurity and its goal is to make an impression, usually for the purpose of boosting the illusion of self-esteem. People who are genuine are far more likely to have authentic love relationships than those who are always playing a role. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com and you can buy The Selfish Path to Romance at amazon.com.